All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Bob Marsh, who is in the Detroit metro area. How are you doing, Bob? Hey, John. Good to see you. Good to talk to everybody. Yeah, and Bob has been a sales lead and a CEO at two category creating companies, has raised millions in venture capital, sold two companies, and has won and grown business from some of the top brands in the world. And what we're going to talk about today is selling with simplicity. So, so Bob, uh, a lot of people think that if you have a if you have a complex sale or a complex product or a prompt complex service, then you have to sell with complexity rather than simplicity. So tell me why selling with explain your concept of selling with simplicity. Sure. Yeah, you know, and I think this is important whether you have a complex sale or a non-complex sale. I mean, really, you think about this. All a lot of this drives from understanding the way that people make decisions. Now, I'm a believer that as a salesperson, our role is to be helping customers make good decisions and to enable the decision-making process to make it easier and faster for the customer themselves. And so when you get in there, then you com com combine all that with you know, a world where, gosh, so many of us are, are just feeling like things are way too complicated. You've got an enormous amount of data and information coming at us every day. You've got new technologies constantly being invented that are making us question a lot of different things, making us feel a little bit left behind. Uh, we're getting more email, social media posts, alerts on our phones than ever before. Um, and uh, it's honestly making a lot of us feel, uh, feel a bit overwhelmed. And when you consider that and you combine it with things like shrinking attention spans, which it has been a reality of the human race. Like our attention spans just have continued to dwindle over the years. Uh, and none of these things seem to be getting any better. And so with that in mind, and you consider like put yourself in the mindset of the customer and all those different things going on, it's hard to pay attention and so many distractions. The idea of making the sales process more, or what I like to think of it, the buying process more simple and easy to understand it becomes an excellent way to stand out from the competition and ultimately help customers make decisions faster and ideally make more decisions in your favor. Yeah, because uh, it was one of the things I mean, you hear talked about a lot. And I mean, it's true on, on some level, but you've heard talked a lot over the last uh, number of years is the whole concept. Well, you know, buyers are doing all of the research themselves online and all of that. But sure. to your point is, yeah, they may be doing research online. That's that's fine. But to your point is. They're so overwhelmed that there's too much information and they don't really know how to or have the time to even go through it. So the fact that you can come along and actually explain and simplify things for them is, I think, is a very good thing because you're sometimes people are assuming that they've been able to do all of this research and they've they've gotten all um, well informed about things but often they've got they've almost shut down because it's too much too much information, so much information. And, and like remember what whatever you know service product you're selling that's one of multiple things that the buyer your mm -hmm. customer has got on their plate um the, the you bring up an interesting point about how like because we've heard for you for i mean a decade now yeah. Buyers are more in control, which is 100% true, by the way. There's a lot of nuances to that that people kind of argue it, but it, it, the reality is it's there. Customers have more information available to them. It is making them feel a little bit more overwhelmed, as I mentioned. But I think what it's actually doing is, it, yes, it is no doubt creating a more informed and educated customer, but it also puts more attention on the salesperson actually being an advisor and a helper. Yeah. Like their role is to help the customer wade through all that information, understand what's real and what's accurate and what they should pay attention to. Um, there, I, I can't remember who did this research. I think it was Gartner. And they found that for when customers do make a purchase all on their own, they have a higher, higher degree of buyer's remorse. Mm. And that's because like they don't have someone at their side to help them reassure them that they're making the right decision or that are helping guide them through all the other things and the blind spots that they have. And we all know we've got them. And that's part of, I think, what customer customers want from a salesperson is help me understand the blind spots, help me understand the risks that I'm not thinking about, help me understand, is this the right choice for me? And really, they just want to trust that we're going to be, you know, that as sellers, that we're going to be open and honest with them about, you know, what's right and what they need. Yeah, and I think you raise an interesting point there about uh, about the fear 
And because I think, uh, you know, the, as you said, buyer's remorse or fear. But I mean, I think now, even as we this often happens, you know, as we head into recession is, you know, people get even more skittish about spending money, about making the wrong decision. So they often opt for no decision at all and mm -hmm. just close down. And I think the, uh, to your point, if you can, if you can be that advisor to them, if you can help them understand there's a lot more it's a lot likelier that they will actually move forward but if they if you leave it to their own devices a lot of times they'll just won't yeah right that's, that's exactly right and there, there's um you know that that is where you know going back to one of the things i mentioned earlier about how realizing that part of a, a seller's role our role as salespeople, is to help people feel comfortable that they're making the right decisions mm -hmm. and no, sure. We, we hope that those decisions will be in our favor. We hope that they'll make those decisions faster. We hope that they'll make a choice that's best for them and that aligns with us and, you mm -hmm. know, what we want to. But, you know, that's just kind of that if you understand that kind of reality. But the, the idea is like, I just want to help a customer make a smart decision and be completely open with them about, hey, here's things that I'm not sure if you need. Or here's something that we're talking about that, you know, sure, you could buy this and, you know, it's something our company offers, but I don't know if you really need it. Or mm -hmm. when you're talking to our competitors, because I know that you will and you should, and I would if I were you, here's the questions you should be asking them. So what you're doing is you're, you're, gen, you're, in, a, you're in a place of genuine, authentic, being authentic mm -hmm. about helping the customer make the right decision. And what that does, it's going to build a lot more trust. And odds are they're going to want to come work with someone like you because they know that you're going to be looking out for them. Yeah, and I think, and I think sometimes what what happens is that we uh, is that we underestimate the amount of emotion involved in making a purchasing decision, uh, at a B two B purchasing decision, because we always think of uh, oh the company's purchasing, but it's also the people putting their names and their reputations behind that purchase. And sometimes you know, if you make the right decision, it can be career enhancing. But if you make the wrong decision, it can be career career limiting, mm -hmm. and and there's a lot of this both personal and professional emotion wrapped up in it. And I think sometimes salespeople actually miss that piece, especially the personal investment. Mm -hmm. No doubt, yeah, because you think that what the customers doing, they're they're oftentimes they're scared. Yeah, they're scared that they're going to make the wrong decision. That's going to have a negative repercussion on them. I'll give you one. There's one little tip or tool I talk about in my. You know, and you know, I do professional speaking, and one of the mm -hmm. one of the little tools that I or tips I have in there is something I call the CEO fist bump, and it kind of aligns with this. And so you think about as a typical the, the buyer we're often dealing with, someone that's not probably on the C level. We'd like to get there, but it's kind yeah. of a day to day person charged with the project. And and, and so something that, that I've done multiple times at a couple different companies is what would, what we would do is we would have the person in the CEO role, which was myself, in my, in my last company, or in a senior executive role, what we would do is go send an email directly to the CEO of the client or send it to the VP of sales or whoever the mm -hmm. person is, say, two levels above your day-to-day -day contact, and just send a note and say, hey, I'm just calling to introduce myself. I understand John and your team has been talking to Mary on my team. John's really impressive, you know, good job hiring him. Sounds like this is a really great, you know, use case for our business. Um, I feel really good about that. Here's a case study to look at, whatever it be. You know, hey, you're in great hands with Mary, but I'm just reaching out to be available if I can help in any way. Look forward to working with you. Just something really simple like that. It is, it is unbelievable the amount of times I've seen a sales opportunity accelerate or close quickly after that message is sent. And the reason I believe is because what happens is it goes back to something you just mentioned. It makes the day-to-day -day contact feel less scared. Right. Because suddenly that C-level executive that, that you know your company's you know reached out to suddenly says, Hey, you know, I got this message, these people seem great, or suddenly they start talking about it, and it almost implies this endorsement or comfort with whoever that vendor is, all of a sudden everybody start their their concerns start going down. They feel like, hey, here's a company that really wants to help us. I have access to a senior level executive if I need it, and let's move forward. And real, you realize how much emotion is wrapped up in these decisions, uh, oftentimes more than logic. Yeah, and that's and by the way, that's a great uh, that's a great way of overcoming that that ongoing the perennial battle you know salespeople have with you know, it's great talking to you, Bob, but I really need to get to the next level and you're blocking me and, or I think you're blocking me. And there's this, 
if you do what you just said, it's a kind of an elegant way of introducing people, you know, higher level people yeah. into the process. It's a great way to get, to bring more senior people in the process at your company and the client's mm -hmm. company. And you can do it in a way, and I've got an email template I can share with anybody. I've got it, I've got it available and the whole like kind of background to it. But the idea is it gets, it, it, first of all, engages the executives in your company. It engages the executive of the client's company. It allows you to kind of move around like I'm not going around you because I'm just yeah. two executives are connecting and I, you know, that's that's kind of let them do what they want to do. Um, but the other thing, going back to your point, is that it, you know, the, it's funny you mentioned that you made the comment, you're blocking me. And, and I think a lot of times a sales rep can feel, can just ask the simple question, like, I really need to get to your manager or need to get to the people that are making the decisions. How do you think that makes the contact feel? Yeah, no, exactly. It, it makes them feel unimportant. <laughs> and so, so really, like, you got to think about how you phrase these things, how you communicate them, and, and figure out a way to make, the, make that customer feel like, I want you to talk to my VP, my C level, because mm -hmm. one of the ways that I've been able to artfully accomplish it over the years is asking smart business questions, saying like, here's some of the things we're curious. Like if, if I were to have a conversation with your CRO or whomever I'd be like, what would they say to this? Like, what, would, what are their thoughts on this? It's a way to kind of uncover those feelings. And then all of a sudden I, I've been amazed how many times when you ask the right questions or position them in that way, the customer will sometimes say, well, how about I set up a meeting for us to talk to our chief mm -hmm. operating officer? And then it just happens because the buyer realizes that I want to do that because it's going to help us make this uh, make this purchase decision happen, not as me as a salesperson just trying to get through you because you don't have enough authority. And that makes them feel less of themselves. Yeah, and I think the the other part too is sometimes uh, you know just recognizing that if you if you invest in that person and you equip them with the right information and maybe the right questions to ask, you know they can start that process for you. Just like you were just saying, saying you know how would your CRO? Maybe these are some of the things that it'd be great if you could if you could find out. Um, then they feel invested in that process and you know, as human nature, they might say, well, it's going to be easier just to bring that person in rather than be the kind of it. Don't you know, they'll, they'll still they'll realize themselves. Like I shouldn't speak for them. Mm -hmm. Why don't I have them speak for themselves? Or, you know what, why don't you talk to them or let's set up a meeting to get them acquainted with you. It'll make them feel, I mean, they, there's all kinds of reasons for it. Another, another thing is that, um, is that I love the question, like sticking on this topic, you might say, you know, I understand that you know, whomever it is, like Mary Johnson is your chief operating officer and she's the one driving this. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So if, if Mary were in the room with us right now, like how would, would this align with her key initiatives right now? What initiatives going on this year that this aligns to? Because I want to make sure that when you go take this to Mary, she's going to see how it connects to something that's a priority for her. And suddenly your contact starts realizing like, geez, maybe this doesn't align. Mm. And this is a good thing to know. Or, geez, maybe if we reposition it this in a different way, it will align. And then now suddenly your contact feels like, thank you for empowering me right. to go have that conversation and put us both in a better position. So, you know, the point is like, it, it just comes back to what we said in the very beginning, being authentic, being real, trying to help people make the right decisions for themselves and realizing that part of our role is to help people through that difficult decision-making process, including working through the politics, you know, that's our role to help them navigate all that. Yeah. And, and, and you, you've mentioned the authentic word a couple of times and, uh, and that's obviously now a, it's a great buzzword. Now everybody's talking about oh, authenticity and there's even people out there saying, I'll teach you how to be authentic. I don't quite know how that works, but anyway, uh, but I do think, I do think there is such a craving now for authenticity. And it's like, sometimes even when I get prospecting calls to myself, I sometimes just wish I would just stop with the bluster and all of this stuff, you know, just first of all, just tell me why you're calling in the beginning, right? Just mm -hmm. be honest about it and, and then have a normal conversation, a normal conversation that I feel like I'm talking to an actual human being, not somebody right. who's putting on an act. Yeah, we're trying to follow a script or yeah. follow an agenda that's been taught to them. You know, it, it's funny. I was just like going back and forth on LinkedIn about the same topic today. Like, and a lot of times these scripts and agendas, like they're not bad. They're actually mm -hmm. correct, like a good way to follow a conversation. But you've got to genuinely be wanting to kind of desire to help somebody out and to want to listen to them. Um, it's funny your comment about um, teaching someone to be authentic. It, it's kind of, it is, on one side, it is kind of a funny thought. Um, 
but I think it's 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 probably important. I know it's important because some people they're so wrapped up in acting a certain way or they've been trained to sell in a certain way that they kind of forget how do you remove a lot of that noise and just believe in yourself. Right. I think what happens is if you don't really believe in yourself and trust your instincts and feel that you have value and feel that you're important and feel that you can add value to a conversation, you're going to rely on, well, I'm just going to try to follow the script because the script is what I should be doing. And all of a sudden you're not being authentic anymore. So I think there actually probably is something to the whole training part of it is how do we get rid of all the junk that has been trained and put into our heads and strip it away and just trust ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, a good start would be maybe don't change personas when you cross the threshold <laughs> virtually or, or physically of your workplace. Yeah. Cause that seems sometimes like, and also maybe sell to people how you'd like to be sold to. But, yeah. but one of the, one of the things you mentioned there, I think is, is critically important is that whole idea of, confidence and belief and you know passion and things like that because at the end of the day i want to buy from somebody who i really believe that they believe passionately in their product that they are come that they really believe it can make a difference to to me that they really want to understand what's going on with me because they really think they can make a difference that is such a contrast as you said to people who who maybe contact you and from the outset you, it's almost like you know they're expecting you to say no they're they're expecting it. It's in their it's in their tone. It's in their approach. You know they're 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 doing they're doing their activities, but they're not really believing in it. Right, and you you can sense that. And yep. the thing is that as a buyer, you can sense that without question. If someone's just going through the motions, and uh, you know what, I, I think that this is. That I saw there's a um, a wonderful uh, a researcher and consultant out there, a gentleman by the name of Scott Santucci, and he he kind of pulled out that from thousands of uh, conversations. Um, uncovered that 87 percent of executives say they find their conversations with salespeople unhelpful so think about that 87 percent of them say the conversation with salespeople are unhelpful and the reason i bring this up because it aligns with what you're saying i can tell someone just going through the motion that's not helpful um but how you know i can look at that stat and say like wow that's so embarrassing for our industry and the whole thing but i look at it and say like what a wonderful opportunity to stand out like if I can just take an interest, re do a little bit of research, recommend something that makes a lot of sense on and on and make the conversation more valuable, it's getting a lot easier to stand out from those that we're selling against just by being more real and authentic. A lot of things we've already been talking about because most people are just going through those motions that you said, and it's easy to spot, spot them over somebody else. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I do think there. I do think that that's the the great news for for salespeople out there is that the, you can the bar has been for a lot of people hasn't been set very high. You can you can exceed it, as you said, by by being real, by being interested, by actually. And the other part is actually learning how to listen because that's something I think people have lost the art of active listening because we're so, you know, we're so distracted. Have you, I mean, you've noticed you can kind of have a conversation with somebody and they're talking to you, their phone buzzes and they look down, they look at who it yeah. is, whatever, and then come back to the conversation and you're like, what? Seriously? And I think that the art of active listening and really asking good questions, but listening and clarifying what people are saying if you do that today in a really elegant way, you'll stand out. Oh my gosh, no doubt about it. Like it's funny is that I had a um, I had a lunch meeting with someone uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was a potential customer, and you know we're just sitting there having a conversation. I'm asking about him and his mm -hmm. business and how he got the job and the growth of his company and his customers, and we're just having a very what I felt was like a really just natural conversation. I was just genuinely taking interest in him and his business. Now, you know, and I'm doing that because I want to learn. I want him to feel comfortable with me. I want to build some trust. I'm looking for maybe are there opportunities and things that he brings up that may be a good way that I can be helpful to him and we can align mm -hmm. on that. That could result in a sale someday. I don't know. But what's funny, we were sitting there having this conversation and like 30 to 40 minutes go by and I was just asking him questions and he kept talking because I just, I was actually interested in him. Right. And all of a sudden he stops and goes, geez, you're really good. Like, <laughs> I've been doing all the talking. And I'm like, and it's funny. I, I, I say that not, not as like, yeah, oh, yeah. look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say that because it almost like bugged me because it, it, it implied that there was, there was like a, um, 
that I was doing it on purpose, like is following some like training regimen. Mm -hmm. And my point is simply like, I just want to take an interest in somebody. Like I'm just asking questions because the reality is I can't help them yeah. unless I understand them. And that's what active listening is about is like really listening, trying to find like, well, what do you mean by that? Or I don't understand. What does that phrase mean? Or, you know, just the more you dig into this stuff, the more, you know, the active listening actually can be fun because you're just digging and trying to understand things. You know, it brings up a, because we've now talked about a couple different things like writing well and the confidence, how you carry yourself. It makes me think that, you know, I've said this a couple of times before, not today, but with others, how, like, what if, what if sales training wasn't on things like overcoming objections and how to qualify and the art of closing the deal and all the closing tactics? What if we train people more on how to have a real conversation, mm -hmm. how to be a good listener, how to write clearly, how to carry yourself with confidence, how to ask questions well? How, you know, how the way you're groomed and the way you dress actually matters. Like, these are almost like the, you know, the, the simple things about just how to act as a human being. Yep. And if you get those right, another one. What a great way to stand out from everybody else. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and like you said, the other part there is with the example from, from your lunch is intellectual curiosity if you're not curious if you're not curious if you're not curious about business if you're not curious about the business of your your prospective customer or the business they are in if you're really not that curious you're never going to have those kind of conversations you're also probably not going to learn a lot <laughs> because like being intellectually curious I i'm so glad you mentioned that. i love that those right like it's you're going to be interested in customers you're going to be interested in learning more about your own business you're going to be interested in other people who are then going to like you more. Yeah. You're going to be, um, you're going to read, you're going to learn, you try to get better at your craft just because you're curious. And it's so powerful. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. Well, listen, Bob, this has been great. All Bob's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm a, uh, a couple of things. Like one is I'm an active chief revenue officer. Um, so I, you know, I'm in the trenches every day, like everybody else. Um, uh, but I'm also a professional speaker. And so I, I, I talk about, you know, we, we, we talked about some of those topics today. Um, and generally I talk on the topic of, uh, of sales and sales growth and customer experience and leadership through the lens of simplicity, you know, through a lot of, the, for a lot of the reasons we talked about today. Perfect. Well, listen, thank you again, Bob. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again soon.